And so welcome to uh, our webinar at TEFL Institute about how to use AI as a TEFL teacher. Um, feel free to uh, leave your uh, all your microphones on mute and uh, you don't have to have your cameras on if you don't want to. So how to use AI as a TEFL teacher. Just to begin with, let's get an idea. Give me a yes or a no. Have you used any AI? Have you been using, actively using any AI yet at all? Especially chat T. Yes or no? Have you used it? Some yes, some no's. Oh, pretty even. Some people yes, some people no. Yes, a lot for Marina. Okay. No, no, yes, no. Okay. So you've got a bit of a mixed crowd here. Some people have used it a lot. Some people a little and some people not at all. It's quite a new thing. It can, it can be daunting at first, but it's absolutely accessible for everybody. And that's what we want to have a little look through today. Uh, I prefer Google Bard, Edward. Okay, I'll be interested to hear why is that. I had a little play with Google Bard, but so far I prefer ChatGPT. Drop us a message in there. What's, uh, what's Google Bard got over ChatGPT? So what is AI? Um, AI has been around for ages, artificial intelligence. But since around February of this year, when ChatGPT put their system up for everyone, it's really kind of changed the game, especially for TEFL teachers. There's so much potential there. So ChatGPT is a, what we call generative, generate lots and lots of different content um, with its various different models. There are two kind of models around at the minute, which is 3.5 and 4. If you have a paid account, you can get access to three, uh, uh, ChatGPT 4, which has a lot more different options, and it's a kind of a, a better version of the model. But ChatGPT 3.5 is the standard one, which is still pretty good on itself. Um, why would we use AI as TEFL teachers? What's, well, it can create a lot of different content. So it can save you an awful lot of time. If for anybody who's had a play with it, it can create huge amounts of content very, very quickly. And the, the detail is in the name there, chat GPT. You can chat with it. So you could ask it about a certain topic. For example, um, how would I uh, teach this grammar point? And then you can chat with it and say, okay, well, what about for an eight-year-old student? What about for a class of students? Um, I didn't like that idea. Give me another idea. And you can have this back and forth, this chat with it. That's why we chat GPT. So you can really, once you get used to it, use it to refine the various content that you're getting out of it. Give you complex answers to topics you have no idea about. So you can, in some ways, think of chat GPT a little bit how you would you like how you would use Google search. So, um, for example, if you wanted to know about something about science or something about language or something about history, you could use chat GPT and search like you would search in a Google search engine. The benefits of chat GPT is it will kind of trawl all its knowledge and then compile it. Whereas when you search on Google, it kind of gives you the best links and then you have to go into the links and you have to check yourself how good the content is. Uh, and, you know, as TEFL teachers, it's a very, very good learning tool. It's excellent. It's great for ideas. I've used it a lot for to give, it, give me new things that I wouldn't necessarily um, have thought of before. So what we're going to have a look at today is different types of applications, how we can use ChatGPT. I'm going to show you in a minute what it looks like. I'm going to give you lots and lots of examples and see what kind of things we can do as TEFL teachers, either on the free version or the paid version, uh, to kind of help us in our classroom, plan our lessons, deliver our lessons, create homework, assessments, exams, that kind of thing. Just as a side note as well, we do have um, actually an AI uh, unit, an AI module at the TEFL Institute that we created a couple of months ago on how to use AI, what it is, and kind of a lot of the things we're gonna go through today it are in there in much more depth. So um, this month in October, we have a special, there's a free AI module with any course, um, such as the 120 hour, the 180 hour, the advanced diploma, any course over the 120, a major course, we're giving the free AI module away. And it's really, really super practical, packed with videos, examples. So I do highly recommend that if you're not already on a course or if you're looking to buy another course. 
Okay, so just as a general overview for AI for TEFL teachers, um, it saves time. We can use it to create materials, to create lesson plans. We can use it to grade work. We can use it to make curriculums, exams. We can do all sorts of things. If I share my screen with you now, let's have it here, then we can have a look at what it looks like and how it works. Okay, I hope you can all see this over here. So this is ChatGPT. This is logged in. Uh, we have a paid version of ChatGPT, but the paid and the free version look the same. The key differences here are in the paid version, you get access to GPT-4. Now, what's the difference here? They, these models, they have lots of different connections like a brain. So there's an order of magnitude. I think it's of, uh, of six times more nodules, more kind of connectivity in GPT-4 than a 3.5. I could be wrong, but it's quite significant. So it's significantly more intelligent. And with GPT-4, you are able to browse the web. You're able to access an awful lot of different plugins. Okay, I'm just going to briefly show you here. You can add on so many different things like transcribing, you can make audio files, you can make code. You can do a lot of different things. Like if you search all, yeah, there's 125 pages, and that was a few pages when it all started. So this is ChatGPT4. We're going to have a look more at GPT 3.5 today, just because when you have this version, it's able to produce much faster results. So how does it work? You literally type something in at the bottom here, press enter, and it will reply. Hello, how are you? He's just a computer program doesn't have feelings, but he's ready to, here to assist. How can I help you today? So this is where we would put in any kind of, we call it a prompt, a message, some text to tell the computer, tell the program, what do we want to get out of it? Now, these prompts are very, very important. If we provide general prompts, we're going to get very general answers. If we provide specific prompts, we're going to get very specific answers. And we can refine those. So if we don't get the answer we want straight away, we can talk to it again, and then we can make it better. We can make it a little bit more uh, suitable for us. So I'm going to give you an example here. I've got an example of something a teacher might want it to do. So I've got here, write an, ex write an email to my class telling them that the lesson is cancelled and we want to reschedule it. OK, this is quite a general, I would say a general prompt. It's not very specific. OK, who in my class? What level of students are they? What lesson is cancelled? When is it going to be rescheduled? And if you have a look, it's done a pretty good job at composing an email. It's not too bad. It's got all the kind of. It's got all the elements there, but is that really suitable? What if my class is a group? of eight-year-olds? What if they're only A2 level? Is that really suitable? Okay, so probably not really. What if I used a different prompt, a more specific prompt? For example, write an email to my online English class, letting them know that the lesson on Tuesday is unfortunately cancelled. Please apologize and say that the, the lesson will be rescheduled as soon as we fix the time we will let them know the class is an a2 pre-intermediate level of english and they are between eight and ten years old and this is important notice the type of language here make sure that the language in the email is understandable to learners of this age group and english language level the email should be no longer than 100 words this type of part of the prompt here is how i would talk how i would talk to a human you know, hey, John, can you write an email to my class, please? And, you know, make sure it's understandable for this A2 class. So this is how I've talked to ChatGPT. And if you see, when it gives me the result here, you'll be able to see straight away. Firstly, it's shorter. If we refer back to the first one. Oh, I lost the first one. It's disappeared. Okay, there it is. It's much shorter. See, this is much longer. It has... Best regards. I hope this email finds you well. Not very suitable for eight-year-olds. I hope you're doing well. I'm writing to let you know that our English lesson is scheduled for this Tuesday. Unfortunately, it has to be cancelled. Sorry for the inconvenience. Now, it's not perfect. It's not the best, the best one for an eight to ten-year-old, but it's certainly much better. And we could refine it further, saying use less 
formal language. So we could chat with it. And now it's going to give us another kind of go at this. I've got some not so great news. Our English class on Tuesday won't be happening. I'm really sorry about that. Look, it's gone really informal here, um, which is great. And we can have this back and forth with it until we get a good result. But I hope you'll agree that using a much more complex prompt, telling it exactly what we want gives us a much closer answer because without telling it what we want, how does it know? what we want okay so that's a little introduction to prompts and how they work just in terms of applications for chat gpt for tefl teachers just in the chat here if you've used chat gpt before or if you haven't but you have some ideas i want you to just write in the chat give me some ideas how could you use chat gpt what things could you do with it as a tefl teacher how could it help you in your job You put it in the chat there. How could you use chat GPT? Lesson planning, gap fields, ideas for activities, age appropriate definitions, report card feedback to simplify complex sentences, lesson planning for business English, preparing exercises. Yes, all fantastic ideas. Lesson planning, suggested resources for different levels. Yes, absolutely. All fantastic ideas, all of the above, and a lot more. Every time I use it, I find more ways to use it and more ideas. And I, you know, discover more plugins of how it can be used effectively. Questionnaires to draft a story using many tenses that I could create a practice exercise from. Yes, can Jack, that's a great question. I'm gonna side onto this one, Anna. Oh, hi, Anna, I haven't seen you for a very long time. Can chat GPT proofread text? Yes, it can. OK, I'm not going to go into detail about it, but I'm excited you asked that in our AI module. Um, we've actually showed how to prove how to use it to proofread um, a text. You can uh, paste in a learner's text or even your own text and say, check my language. And it can either correct it and you have to be quite specific. So you're going to have to look at the unit here to get the exact prompts and things. But it can tell you uh, it can either just correct it for you or you can with some uh, prompts you can get it to highlight to you where the errors are and why and it can explain it um, there are a lot of different things you can do that are really really exciting okay so getting back to this yeah i think you know there are main there's some main areas that that we can be helped with as tefl teachers we have kind of general administration that would be emails communication scheduling making timetables doing report cards writing letters home to the students telling about changes, things like forms or contracts, for example, um, creating syllabi, creating a syllabus. So maybe you've got a class, an online or an offline class, one-to-one -one or group, and you want to create a series of lesson ideas. Um, and you can you can just ask it. You can input all the variables and it can kind of give you a, a, a syllabus. Um, it can create lesson plans, lots and lots and lots of different ways to make lots of different lesson plans. It can create materials like writing texts, um, you can create um, information, you can create activities, gap fills, exercises, an awful lot of things. You can take, uh, for example, text from anywhere else and you can kind of edit it. So one thing that we go over in the unit is um, go, taking like a BBC article, for example, and then putting it into ChatGPT and then changing the grading the level of the language suitable for learners at lower or higher levels, it can kind of grade it so it wouldn't be this native English speak, native English speaking kind of C1 level. You can put it down to B1, A2, A1, B2, whatever. Um, you can use it to create exams, assessments, to give feedback. You can use it for proofreading. Um, it's very good for proofreading, I'll be honest, Anna, um, and, and others who are thinking about it. I would say you can never ever trust ChatGPT 100%, and that's important because it is a program. Um, so you've got to, you know, check what it's outputting, but you can use it for proofreading. And I have it generally defaults to American English. So, you know, being a British person, I kind of tell it, hey, can you proofread this? Um, and I would like it to be in British English or you could do the same with Irish English or Australian English or American English or Canadian English or South African English or whatever. So you can tweak it like that. Um, and it's very, very useful and it does listen. So thinking about the administration side, I want to give you an example here of something that's quite tricky to do um, that would be really, really easy with ChatGPT. 
imagine you're working uh, independently as a TEFL teacher. Maybe you're teaching online. You've got a new student. Fantastic. And you want to make a teaching agreement, a contract with your student. Something simple, but something to officiate, to make it official that you're teaching them what the conditions are, what the pay is, who the learner is, who the teacher is, how long the lessons are, the frequency of the course, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I've got here a sample prompt. Notice that the prompt is quite quite big. So you could say, create a contract for my ESL learner, my EFL learner, my TEFL learner, whatever. But that's going to give you a very general uh, contract there. So I've created a little bit more of a complex one. Create a contract for my ESL learner. Include typical information and clauses found in a professional contract. Details. This is just a fake name, but for example, here's the learner, here's the teacher. Number of lessons, they're 10 hours, 60 minutes per lesson. The price is 25 euros for 60 minutes. The total course price is 250 euros. Payment due one week before the first lesson. Cancellation policy, side note, not to do with AI. I highly recommend a cancellation policy for anybody who teaches independently because students can and will not turn up or cancel last minute. Good way to protect yourself, even if they're friends. Learner can cancel up to and including having two hours, up to including two lessons, but two hours before the lessons, but not after. Sorry, the mistake there, two hours before lessons, but not after. Late policy. If they are later than 15 minutes, the class is forfeited. Okay, the including, let me delete that. Meaning if they're later than 15 minutes, the class is cancelled and you don't have to do another class. They've lost it. A rescheduling policy, they mutually agree to reschedule the class no later than one working day before. Okay, you can make up your own terms, but these are the ones I've added in there. So let's see what kind of contract they're going to come up. Okay, it's going to be quite a general one, but it's going to have all the information in it um, that I've put in. Hopefully, that's the good. And just a side note, as it's kind of generating as well, the reason why we're using 3.5 now is that's generated really, really quickly. I'm going to give you a comparison on how that would work with ChatGPT4. You can see it's a better language model. So when you're playing with it on your own, but there are limitations, you can 25 messages every four hours and it's slower. So for the sake of our webinar today, I've used 3.5 because it generates much, much, much faster. So we've got a contract, we've got our learner, we've got the dates, we have our teacher's information, we have the lessons and the payments, we've got all these different points here, like a proper report, like a proper contract, cancellation policy, late policy, rescheduling policy, the termination of contract, and it's added a bunch of stuff that I didn't ask for, because I just said a professional contract. So therefore, it's done that, termination of contract, confidentiality, governing law, entire agreement, amendments, and signature. This looks like a real contract. If you'd add, put this into chat in, into Google Docs and made a PDF or put it into Word and made a PDF and sent it, this would look legitimate. You know, can you imagine how long that would have taken you to sit down and write yourself? And like anything, you can refine it. So maybe your country or you yourself has a specific law or requirement about, you know, maybe an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement, maybe um a change in conditions when they can cancel, when they can't cancel. Maybe you need something else extra in there. You could ask chat GPT that with any specific rules or laws. So I think that's a nice example of something that's tricky, something that would take me quite a long time with a blank piece of paper to sit down and write, but that is uh, very, very useful and can help us as TEFL teachers. Because, you know, if, if you're an English teacher, you don't want to be messing around with contracts. You don't want to be messing around with documents. That's not what we do. We want to plan lessons and deliver them, don't we, and teach English. Okay, so that's a really, really nice example of contract. Uh, just a little bit of chat where, you know, for example, we can talk about a syllabus. I'm not going to give you an example because I want to go straight on to lesson plans, but... Um, somebody's just put in the chat here, can you highlight and edit part? So. Actually, you can't highlight, okay, but you can edit. So I'll just give you a quick example. Sorry to go back, guys. Let's say, for example, I want to change something in the cancellation policy. I can just say here, change the cancellation policy to four hours before the lesson. So it says here two hours before the lesson. I'm, I want to change it to four. So I can just tell it that, and it should regenerate 
yeah, it's going to regenerate the entire contract and it should change that one specific bit. There we go. Four hours before the schedule lesson. And you can have a back and forth like that as much as you like. And that's what it's for. The more you have a back and forth on any given topic, you can see here we've got lots of different conversations. So in that conversation, ChatGPT is not only generating, it's remembering what I've said in every iteration. So I could go back and forth three times about the cancellation policy, and then I could just jump to governing law and it knows that we're still in the same topic. We're still on the same contract. Just like if you and I were having a conversation, I would know we're still talking about the same thing. And it learns. It learns you. It learns your way of speaking. It learns your way of writing. Um, and it, it just adds to its database of how people are asking it things. So it's really super fun to have a play with. When I first got on this, I was doing things, I think I asked it to compare, make a, to, to create an essay comparing and contrasting uh, grizzly bears with salmon or the Formula One world champion with uh, pine trees or something strange like that, that I'd never be able to write about. And it was, and I was able to refine it and, add, you know, add a joke at the end. Can you add a, a, a suitable metaphor or tell me a story in the middle of this explanation, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Yes, Marina, you can do it manually, but it does take longer. But I think, you know, ChatGPT will get you 80 to 90% of the way. And most likely the little things you're going to kind of edit yourself uh, uh, towards the end for sure. Okay, so I want to go on to a new, a new chat here and I want to talk about lesson plans. Okay, so lesson plans are something that every TEFL teacher has to do. Obviously, you know, when you're up and working and you're read, you're, you're a TEFL teacher with a company or yourself, you're probably not making full giant lesson plans. However, it's good to know how to do that. So I'm going to kind of look more at formal lesson plans or semi-formal as opposed to kind of quick notes and that. So I've got an example here. And again, being specific is your best friend in this situation. If you just wrote, write a lesson plan, based on fruit. It's going to give you a random lesson plan. It, it probably doesn't know that you're an English teacher. You're not an English teacher. It doesn't know what who the learners are, what level they are. So I've got quite a specific set of instructions here. Create a lesson plan for the following class. Location is online. Important because you don't want it to say, you know, pick up this, hand it out to your learners, walk in pairs, you know, that kind of thing. Age and level of learners, age 15 years old, B1 level. Lesson focus is grammar, learning the third conditional lesson approach is ppp important because ChatGPT doesn't know what lesson approach you want it might just suggest activities if you don't tell it it's a ppp lesson it's a task-based learning lesson it's a guided discovery lesson it's a skills-based learning lesson you need to let it know what type of lesson it is and just to be sure i mean i'm sure it understands ppp but i've added presentation practice and production in there as well duration of 60 minutes and Notice this as well that I've added here afterwards. I, production should be the longest stage, then practice with presentation and warm up the shortest because we we don't want the times to be all wonky, to be out. So I've actually kind of told it. I have found that you have to fiddle with this a little because sometimes chat DPT tends to forget. Lesson stages. Give examples of the target language in each stage. So I want that target language in there. I want it to do the, the hard work for me. I don't want it to just say, teach the learners the target language. And then I'm sitting there trying to work out what the target language is. I want ChatGPT to do the heavy lifting. Where there are activities, give specific examples, activities and tasks. Don't be vague, be specific. Materials, suggest practice materials, homework. Create a 30 minute homework task to be completed after the lesson. Remember, I've told it again, just like I would a person. Don't forget, the total lesson time and stage procedure should not exceed 60 minutes. So let's have a look what kind of lesson it's going to give us here. Lesson plan, third conditional for B1 level learners. Sometimes, as you can see here, it's a bit like a steam engine. It takes a while and then it gets going. So it's thinking about what you've asked it. Uh, occasionally it will crash, but sometimes, and usually it's pretty good. The free version is slower. Um, and it tends to be a little more erratic, but the paid version is generally pretty good, especially with th this is quite a simple uh, prompt for it compared to, you know, imagine it's been asked about medicine or something like that. 
So while it's generating there, we can have a look. So it's lesson plan, third conditional, B1 level learners, age 15. Here's a presentation of warm up 10 minutes and we can see straight away. That's good. Look, it's got my 10 minute warm up presentation, 20 minute practice and 30 minute production. So I don't have to get upset with it about the timings. It's got the perfect timings here. Activity, story, narration, begin with a brief story and kind of gives us a task here. Ask the student to identify the sentence. Oh, good. So it's involving the learners. And then it's eliciting the form, the structure of the grammar. Fantastic. Look at that. That's great. You know, and I'll show you in a minute how we can refine this. I'll just go through it all first. Practice, gap fill, ideal, perfect. The chat GPT understands what a practice activity is. It hasn't told me to present information. It's told me a gap fill, which is an ideal practice activity. Uh, handout or screen share, good. That's because we put the online. A worksheet with 10 sentences where the students have to complete gaps using the third conditional form, fantastic. And it's highly guided as well. It's not just really blank, really difficult. Seems on first inspection, suitable for B1 learners. Fantastic, it's given me two. Again, what we can do, because we don't want to have to think up eight, do we? If we're gonna have to give 10, then we want the other eight. So we can ask it in a minute to give us that. Um, active activity sentence transformation. So we've got a second activity here, changing the sentences. So they're given sentences and they must change them into the third conditional. This is a little bit like a uh, Cambridge uh, first or Cambridge advanced activity, isn't it? Here where you've got one sentence, you have to transform it. So that's nice. Um, and you've got a production. Okay, fantastic. A discussion, an ideal production activity. Breakout, it's even got in breakout rooms here. Um, and it's got a short story writing again. We've got material and we've got homework and even a recap. OK, so that's a lovely, lovely task. Now, how would we refine it? Because we're probably not going to take it as read that that's perfect. That's not a perfect lesson plan. That's good. But like I said here, you know, OK, this is good. But we've it says give 10 and it's only given us two. So let's say provide 10 gap fill sentences for the practice stage. So I want the computer to do the heavy lifting. So I'm going to ask it to give me all the sentences. There we go. And now ChatGPT is going to give me the sentences so that I don't have to do it. And I could just copy them onto a separate sheet and either send them to learners or print them off if you're in a physical classroom. Okay, it's done the heavy lifting. And we're going to have a little bit of another look at materials after this, but just in the context of this lesson plan, OK, we can pull out more activities here. OK, and so what else can we do? OK, maybe we could think, for example, the presentation. OK, this is a nice idea. Ask them to identify the sentence that talks about the past. Hype. That's a lot of work. So what if we said something like provide five examples of the third conditional the teacher could show in the presentation stage? So maybe they need more examples than that one that they were suggested. OK, so here's some examples here. The teacher could use that at the start. Maybe they could use it in a story. In fact, let's do that. Create a short story for the presentation stage using the third conditional one. We could even ask it for a short story. Look, okay, the lost ticket. I don't know how long this short story is going to be, but we could define it. We could say a 50 word story or a 100 word story or a 20 word story. OK, and we could ask the learners to identify what was the grammar. Maybe you could emphasize the past, the part of the third conditional there. OK, to get that, to draw it out from your learners. So I'm going to let that kind of, yeah, there we go. It's not so bad. It's not to the end. I'm sure that's a little bit long for you to explain, but maybe you could say, um, uh, create this story in 75 words. It's not the best at getting the exact number of words, but it will reduce it. Let's see what it comes out as. There we go. It's shorter. It's much better. So you can have that back and forth until you get it completely right. The point is here, you can look at the lesson plan and you can make changes on it. OK, and you can. Yes, just like we've had it, you can have it in a similar style. You could ask ChatGPT to pretend to be an author, pretend to be a teacher or, to, you know, it is an enormous amount of things. We're really just touching the surface here, but there's so many different things we can do. Um, obviously, with the lesson plans, the more detail, the better. A little bit of refining, 
get as many materials or ideas as you can. Don't be sat there thinking up your own examples. You know, you can use ChatGPT for that. That's the best thing about it. Okay. Talking of materials, you can see there we created a little story. We created a gap fill. We can do lots and lots of other things. So we can create texts. And when we have texts, we can create questions about them. So if you had created a story or a text, we could say uh, create multiple choice questions, testing the third conditional based on this story. Okay, so we can take our text and we can ask it to create questions. So I've chosen multiple choice here. We could use gap fields. We could use true false. We could do a matching exercise. We could do a guided discovery exercise where kind of questions to notice the grammar, for example. But as you can see here, ChatGPT is just creating me multiple choice questions. OK, and you can do that with so many things. I've used it, like I said earlier about the BBC, I've used it by just going off the Internet, lifting a topic off the Internet, you know, global warming or, you know, news today or some sports news. For example, I did one about um, Messi and the World Cup. I think that's the one in the unit. Um, and you can lift that, put it in, grade it to the right level and then pull a bunch of exercises out of it. And you can do anything. I've got multiple choice here. I can put create discussion questions based on this story. So for example, as a production, I can create discussion. So in pairs, discuss the following. Here are some discussion questions. Here are some multiple choice questions, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's fantastic. It really, really takes uh, an awful lot of effort out of being a teacher. I think the most important thing with ChatGPT and BARD and all these other ones is you as the, the person who's using it, the user, the input, you have to understand what you want. And it's strange because often we speak without fully thinking and to be aware of what you want. I've got a class. What exactly do I want from this class? What exactly do I want from this lesson plan? What does the what what do I want from a story? Okay, now I have a story. What's it highlighting? What's the point of that? Oh, it's grammar. Okay, well, how many examples of that grammar do I need? Maybe five, maybe eight, maybe ten. And what am I going to do with that? Am I going to make multiple choice? Am I going to make a guided discovery? Am I just going to ask comprehension questions? What am I going to do? So that's that's the most difficult one. As you can see here. It's given us loads and loads of discussion type questions. I'm not going to give you an example, but I will just explain. You can use it to create sample um, exam questions. So I'm going to show you how to make little quizzes in a second. But if you're teaching, let's say, a Cambridge class or, an, or uh, um, an IELTS class, you could say, create me an IELTS writing task. Create me a Cambridge uh, speaking and listening task. Um, and it will create that and you can refine it to be an actual sample. And conversely, you can take people's writing and put it in there and say, grade this. Here is the question. This is an IELTS test. Grade this writing. Tell me what the grade is. Give me feedback based on the four components. If you're familiar with IELTS, there's four marking components and show where they could do better. Suggest feedback. And you could even get the chat gpt to rewrite the learner's work in a higher level to show the learner how they could have improved there's so many different things you can do just before we kind of finish off here in sort of five minutes or so i want to show you how to create quizzes exams assessments okay so in fact i'm going to stick with this one here because let's do it in the third assessment say you're teaching a class and you want to do a little pop quiz for example you could say create a five question quiz on the third conditional grammar. Something simple to start with. So we're sticking on this topic of our B1 class of 15 year olds studying the third conditional. Okay, here's a five question pop quiz, for example, it's going to come up with here. I could refine that and I could say, okay, not about the form, it could just be examples, it could be gap fills again, but it's just taken my general request make some kind of quiz and give me some results.
we could take that further and we could say something like suggest three speaking exam prompts that would test learners on their knowledge of the third condition. So it doesn't have to be a written test. It could be just a speaking exam prompt, something that the learners could test themselves with, or maybe you as the teacher as testing them or giving them a little quiz. There we go, unreal past events. It's asking them to imagine a situation in your life where things didn't go as planned. Of course, the third condition is the unreal past. If I hadn't have moved out the way, I would have been squashed by the tree, but I didn't. I, I moved out of the way and I didn't get squashed by the tree. You know, I'm talking about something in the past that's not real. And you can already see here, you're getting ideas by reading these prompts of how the students could use them to talk about the third conditional. Okay, fantastic. Or for example, create an exam writing task for a B1 level based on their knowledge of the third conditional. So this is a writing test, a writing test. They could create some kind of writing exam um, based on it, if you want them to write something for homework or write something in the class, okay? And again, you can use it for everything. You could create a diagnostic test. You have a new student and you're not sure their level. So you want a grammar test that will tell you based on which questions they get right and how many, what level are they? Are they A1, B1, C1, B2? And you could create that. Create a grammar diagnostics test and it must tell me the level of the student. It's gonna have 40 questions varying from very simple at the beginning, A1 to very hard, C1 at the end. And you could put in the learner's answer and it could grade it for you. You could put in a bunch of text or some topics and then say, create exam questions about this. There's so many, so many different things you can do with this. I'm gonna stop sharing here and have a little bit of a look at the chats here. Um, and just go back over some comments that I might have missed before we finish. If you want to ask a question before we do finish, please chuck it in the chat now and we can have a little look. Um, okay, I'm wondering the same too. What is somebody right here? It's a fantastic call for teachers and learners, but how can we be sure that students write their own thoughts in homework and not chat GPT? And someone's written, I'm wondering the same. If the answers are online, we use a plagiarism tool. But if they're copied, how do we check? I think this is a good uh opportunity to talk about maybe some downsides of the ai downsides are um it generally generally most of the time passes a plagiarism check so it will not trawl the internet and then just pull some information from a website and give you that it will rephrase it repackage it so um you know we deal with a lot of assessments so we see this a lot uh, it does pass a plagiarism check that's number one number two we can't be sure, <laughs> we just can't. It's a blessing and a curse. So there are lots of fantastic applications as we've kind of gone over today, but as teachers, it's not 100% possible to know whether your student's work is your student's work. Now, a caveat is there are AI detection tools, um, things like Turnitin, CopyLeaks, uh, there are others, but those are the kind of the main ones out in the market. However, the generative AI, and the, the AI detection tools are not the same. They are about this. They're always, the tools are always playing catch up. Um, there's a risk of false positive. You have to put quite a lot of text in to be able to get an accurate read because the detection tool checks whether the, you know, the learner's style of writing, if it's more mechanical. You know, for example, an AI will write, if you said, uh, describe England, it will say England is in Europe. England is a temperate country. England is, and it will kind of be repetitive, whereas uh, we will be more descriptive. England is a cold, wet country that's sometimes fun and is known for some sport, but generally they're not very good at football. You know, we'll add, we'll embellish, we'll add a lot more adjectives, descriptions than an AI would. So it can detect that. Um, a, a very good way as teachers to know uh, if your students have cheated is, um, has their language suddenly improved dramatically? You know, if you've got a B1 learner and suddenly they have fantastic English, no spelling mistakes, perfect capitalization, great grammar, great punctuation. That's a, a really good indication that someone's cheating there. And I must say as well, it shouldn't be used in any kind of assessment. So, for example, on our courses, we check every single one, every single um, submission. Um, AI is classed as plagiarism because you're plagiarizing from the AI software, even if it's not directly off the internet, it's still the software. Um, and as teachers, if you're running examinations for people, 
um, then you're going to have to be aware of it. I'd say it's a huge problem for education, but uh, just being diligent, being aware uh, and a bit of practice, you can get going. It's hard because with plagiarism, you can kind of go and prove it. You can say it's from this website or from this book with AI. You have to be a little bit more careful it's, and use best judgment. It's about comparing people's work to previous work, um, having a chat with them, looking at the AI detection tools and making an informed decision. Uh, yeah, you could hazard a guess by their level of ability to speak. If you are if you know the person, um, you can have a conversation with them and discuss the topic. Um, if you don't know the person, comparing with previous work or previous audio and things like that. Uh, Marina's put chat GPT use a lot of key adjectives too. Always the same ones. Yeah, it's kind of repetitive. Even when they do use adjectives, but it's it's kind of we would tend to embellish. We would add a lot of things like you know, um, it's been a good day. It's been a good day, but I'm tired. But it's cold. You know, we'd add a lot of things that a computer wouldn't necessarily add, but um, it will get better. It will get better, and chat GPT is better, and it will. Uh, but it's here to stay. AI is a fantastic tool. I don't want to be negative about it at all. It's fantastic. I highly recommend everyone to use it, the free version, um, and just get playing with it as well. Just a final word here before we finish off. Uh, you can enroll on our website. Well, we've got a message here now. Enroll on our website for a free AI module with any course from the 120 up to the 310. The email is down there. Um, and please do get in contact with us. I see a lot of names that I recognize that are already on courses and a lot of new names. So um, hello to you guys who are already with us and welcome to any, anybody who's thinking about joining us. Um, the AI module uh, has four different lessons and it goes into much, much more detail in videos and written examples of everything and much more that we've talked to today. Really, really practical and something you can save and use as a TEFL teacher. Um, very lovely to see everybody. I hope you have a wonderful evening wherever you are and take care. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.